Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I'm hearing a lot of concern right now over what's going on over in China as it's relating to the coronavirus. I'm watching it really closely as well. This may be very different from some of the other potential uh, outbreaks in the past. Uh, the people that matter are talking about this differently. I, I think there's a fair degree of likelihood that this is going to turn so into something that's going to be a reasonable problem for a lot of people. Does that mean that it's bubonic plague come back and every, half of everyone that gets it or more are going to die? No, it's not that. But even something far south of that will be a real problem for a lot of people and it's something we should be concerned about. As someone in the preparedness community, this is something that I've had my eye on for a while as you know if you've been into the preparedness community I'm sure you've had your eye on potential issues like this as well but there are a lot of people that are new to it and you know whenever there's something that just jumps out into the headlines suddenly there's a lot of people that are concerned and want to prepare for it you know as a prepper my first piece of advice is you know that's great it would be have been even better if you had started earlier but you meet people where they are and there's always something that you can do now if you're looking uh, through YouTube for preparedness videos and things like that there's gonna be a lot of people in the preparedness community that are gonna be talking about you know society's all gonna collapse and it's gonna it's gonna be disorder and everything and what you really need to do is start buying a lot of these I'm not gonna give you that advice, that's silly. There are all sorts of things that you can do that are common sense, boring approaches that are going to protect you and your family from this if it continues along the lines that it's been going and becomes a major worldwide event. Even a flu that doesn't kill you is really awful. I hate getting the flu. Whether it kills me or not, flus are really terrible and it's nice to try to avoid getting them. But you don't have to stock up on bullets and weapons and camo gear and all sorts of crazy stuff you see on doomsday prepper channels there are all sorts of very very simple very very inexpensive things and a lot of it you already likely have in your house here's a huge one soap washing your hands if you are in an area where you're concerned that there might be cross contamination and there is a <coughs> There is, I, I don't have it, I, I'm just getting over a cold myself. Um, there is a decent amount of concern with this coronavirus that there is a pretty long incubation period. It seems like there might be an incubation period of up to two weeks where people could be contagious but not symptomatic, which means that they could be spreading this on a lot of surfaces. So if you're out in an area and you wanna take precautions, wash your hands, pop into a public bathroom, use soap on your hands, wash up when you get home, wash your hands up. If you don't want to be uh, waiting until you get home to wash your hands in your car, you don't need one this big, but you can do hand sanitizer. Bring some hand sanitizer with you. This is a refill, but you can get a very small container of hand sanitizer and you can keep it in your car. Every time you leave a public place, get it on your hands, get it on the steering wheel. Is it going to be 100% effective against anything you might have uh, inhaled into your body? No, but it's one additional line of defense. If you get something on your hands, the last thing you want to be doing is touching your face with it. Also, and this is something that might be a little bit more expensive to buy now because, you know, if you're buying now, you, you've waited until the scares happen, so prices have gone up. That's one of the reasons I'm into prepping and preparedness. I like to buy things when they're cheap. Respirator masks. I stock plenty of these. I have a video, uh, here's a link to it right here, about cleaning it, uh, a respirator mask. That video was made for specifically wildfires, a lot of smoke and particulates in the air about cleaning a respirator mask to try to extend the life of it for that sort of situation. It's not going to be as effective if you're trying to eliminate viruses. You really want a fresh one of these. You don't just buy one of these masks. You want to buy boxes and boxes of these because you, they're, uh, they're not reusable. You use them for a while and then they're done. You discard them. This would be a great thing. Here's a link in the description below if you want to get these. They are not going to be the best price right now because there's a bunch of other people that want to get them, but it would... <coughs> <coughs> There you go. But it would probably be a good idea to at least get something. In addition to that, there's all sorts of other things that you can do and maybe should be doing you know, regularly anyway. Things like vitamins, just getting proper nutrition, that's gonna help your immune system to fight things off. If you get besieged with virus and it's all over you, 
you know, all the vitamin C and <laughs> tablets and things like that in the world probably aren't going to help you much. But if you're on that razor's edge of being, you know, between getting something and your immune system kicking it out, you know, before it really gets in the door, having that healthy immune system is going to help you with that. Getting enough sleep, all these types of things, just taking care of your body. This stuff, it's not exciting like weapons and explosives and booby traps and all the other things you hear about on doomsday prepper channels but they're very effective they're very uh inexpensive and it's the kind of thing that you can do whether or not you've prepared we all have soap we can all run out and get some hand sanitizer we can use common sense about not hanging out with people that are visibly sick. These are all things that you can do to try to uh, you know, protect yourself, protect your family so that you're not bringing things back to your family. Uh, and none of them cost a heck of a lot of money. And a lot of them are just really simple common sense things that you can jump in and do already. Keep yourself healthy, keep a good diet, clean your hands, clean surfaces around your house. And just those things alone are gonna put you in a much better position than if you did none of that and you're just losing a bunch of sleep, being afraid, wondering where you can get a rifle. <laughs> That's it. Good luck with this outbreak. Hopefully it turns into something that, you know, just flashes in the pan and goes away. But if it doesn't, it's better to prepare ahead of time than wish that you did earlier on. And worst case scenario, so you have extra soap in your house. You'll eventually use it, I hope. <laughs> That's it. Good luck and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.